Okay, so we are going to talk about negotiating the purchase order, all right? So um, I have drawn a fake purchase order, right? Fake invoice on the board. And let's just go over what the different dates are on the invoice, okay, as a review. So there's the invoice date. Um, what was yesterday's date? Give me yesterday's date. Yeah, August 26th? Okay, cool. All right, so one date you will not find on the invoice is the ROG date. So first of all, let's figure out what the ROG date is and then why would it not be on an invoice? What does ROG stand for? It's all right, it was seven. Receipt. Receipt of? What could the G possibly be? Goods, right? Receipt of goods. Okay, so let's say that the receipt of goods date is, I don't know, 9-1. Why would ROG not be printed on the invoice? Well, when does the invoice get generated, usually? When? When you Probably when you purchase the goods, sometime after purchasing the goods, but probably before the goods are going to ship or maybe while the goods are in transit, but the invoice is never gonna get printed like long after you receive the goods, right? You're gonna get billed for those goods before. So I'm just putting that date here because it's one of the dates that we're gonna have to like juggle, balance, know about, but it's never gonna be written on an invoice, right? Because the invoice gets generated before the goods are received, okay? so. Invoice date is, like I always say, it's like your cable bill date. Receipt of goods date is when the goods are received in your distribution center or for mom and pop in the store, okay? And then there's start, ship, and cancel. So let me throw out some dates there. Um, let's call the start ship 815 and let's call the cancel 8, are there 31 days in August? Yeah, right? 31 days has September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31 except February. I don't know why that doesn't rhyme. Or there's the knuckle game. Have you ever played the knuckle game? Everybody knows the knuckle game? No? Okay, a student taught me this. So if you count the months on your knuckle, let me see if I get this right. The high knuckles are 31 days. So January, February, March, April. Go ahead, pull your knuckle out. May, June, July, 31. August, you have to count this knuckle again, I guess? September, October, November, December. Yeah, it kind of works, okay? Or just pull your phones out and look on your calendar, okay? It's that simple. But who can remind me what is a start ship? So what does August 15th mean as a start ship? It's the first day the items can arrive. Good. It's not the first day that the goods can start shipping, even though it, if that would be just so logical, right? It is the first day, basically, that the goods can get there right? So that's the start trip. That's the first day that will allow the goods to get to our distribution center. And the cancel date is what? So August 31st is what? The last day you can accept them. Good. So it is the last day the goods can not ship, but arrive. Okay. A little bit confusing. The last day the goods can arrive at either our distribution center or for mom and pop at our store. Okay, cool. So look, we're juggling like four dates and actually there's five dates. There's one other date we have to juggle. What is the one other date? So we've got the date of the invoice, the date we receive the goods, the date for start ship, the date for cancel. There's one other date. Yeah, it, well, not that we have to, or sure, the day we have to. It's also, there's also the day we can. Just because there's a date that we can get a discount doesn't mean we have the money, right? You maybe have all experienced that in your personal life, like just because a bill is due doesn't mean the money's in the check, you have to pay it, right? So then there's the payment date, okay? Um, and the payment date is the date that we are gonna pay the bill. Some, I told your story last week, sometimes invoices just sit, you know, we forget about that. Okay, so those are the dates that we have to deal with, okay? Now, there's something called dating, dating. Yes, we talked about Tinder last week. That's not the kind of dating we're talking about in this class. When we say dating, what are we doing? We address dating. What are we doing? Finding a man. No. What are we doing? Um, that's when you like... Um, dating. It's the time the retailer has to pay the invoice. That's one way of saying it. And another way of saying it is negotiating when payments do. 
okay? Dating is pretty much like saying, hey, uh, give me 30 extra days to pay the bill. Give me 60 extra days to pay the bill. Um, don't allow me to pay the bill until the month of September. Dating is just negotiating when payment is due in order to still take it, take a discount, okay? All right, so let's go through. Um, we just went through the invoice, so we talked about the different parts of the invoice. The only other part of the invoice we didn't talk about is the individual line items. Does everybody understand what the individual line items are? It's no different from buying three things online, right? These are the individual lines on the invoice that are gonna be what we're buying, okay? What, here's a, here's a trivia question for you. What kind of discount comes off of the line items? Not the total, but off of this, like if this line were $3,000, what discount do I take off of this line? So you've got a little menu of discounts, take a look at them. Quantity? You got it, right. Quantity is gonna be always the first discount that we take off the invoice, and it doesn't come off of the bottom, it comes off of the individual line items. Why? Um, so it's before you buy the book. Right, so a quantity discount might come off of this line. Yeah, it's more individual. But it might not come off of that line, or it might come off of this line, but it might not come off of that line. So we always do the quantity discount first. Let me write this more for somebody can see, right? We always do quantity discount first because it comes off of individual purchases, not off of the total bill cost of an invoice. Does everybody understand that? It may come off of this shirt, but not this pan, right? Okay, beautiful. All right, so now let's just go through, I know we did this last week, so just quick review, the one, two, three, four, five types of discounts, okay? So the first one is the quantity discount, which we just described. Why do we get a quantity discount? Because we are yeah, exactly, because we're buying a certain volume that qualifies for a quantity discount. It could be a number of units, sometimes it's dollar figure. If you buy $3,000 worth, you qualify for this quantity discount, okay? So it can be units or it can be dollars. So always make sure that you're reading the scenario to make sure that you actually qualify for the discount I'm telling you about. Sometimes I will tell you about a discount that you don't qualify for. So don't jump into these problems thinking, I just take all these percents off. You have to qualify for them, okay? Um, and then we talked about the Robinson Patent Act. Yes, um, for the viewers at home, remind everybody there are two things the Robinson Patent Act says are illegal. What are they? Price fixing and price discrimination. Beautiful, price fixing and price discrimination. Price fixing is where two companies get together and control the prices of things, okay? A wholesaler cannot force a retailer to retail goods at a certain price. That's why there's MSRP, manufacturers, brewers, what? Suggested. Suggested. It has to be suggested, right? Cannot mandate. And then price discrimination is just haphazardly charging wholesale prices and retail prices. You know, a retailer can't just walk in, uh, have customers walk into a store and randomly make up prices either. That's price discrimination, both from a wholesaler and a retailer, okay? Okay, good stuff. Okay, and then here was just a quick example, I don't know why it does that, um, of a quantity discount. So here's a little menu, it tells you, okay, for this amount of orders and this amount of orders and this amount of orders, this is the individual discount that you qualify for. So let me just ask you, if I ordered five, that 500 square yards of this, who are we carpet? 500 square yards, how much discount would I get? Yeah. No discount, correct. There'd be no quantity discount because I just didn't order enough. I'm not ordering enough, okay? Um, in this problem, I'm ordering that amount, 759, so obviously I qualify for the first discount, right? The smallest one, half a percent, okay? Easy, and everybody knows how to take a discount off, yes? Make sure you know in your calculator how to do it, okay? And then also remember, we said never, never, never add discount. There's only one occasion where we're gonna add a discount. I'll remind you in a second, okay? But you never, never, never add discounts, right? 30% off and 15% off is not 45% off, agree? It's 30 and then 15, you do them separately, okay? Good, okay, so that's quantity, it comes first. Where do we take quantity discount off? The individual line items of an invoice. Cool? Okay, second, uh, the second discount is trade. Who can remind me a trade discount is a discount for? Um, 
or based on. Who the wholesaler wants to attract. Yeah. Another way I always say it is just who you are, right? Who you as a buyer are. And I don't mean like, you know, if you're attractive and you smell good, you get a discount. No, that's price discrimination. Um, it's based on like who the wholesaler is trying to attract. So give me an example of a trade discount. Who might a wholesaler give a trade discount to? Um, not, um, maybe, not necessarily. not necessarily, maybe, but not necessarily, like for a repeat customer, I get you, sure, not the most common type of trade discount. Like, like a name? Or? A category. Okay, yeah, and bigger. maybe the opposite of that one. Like big? Lauren. Yeah. Like really big? We call them majors, mm -hmm. the major accounts. Most wholesalers are going to offer a trade discount to their major accounts, which are usually the big department stores, okay, or any other like massive chain company. So if you're them, what do you get? Boom, trade discount, okay? What does a trade discount usually look like? What does it usually look like? Just like you guys who work retail get those special couple time of year hookups, what does a trade discount look like? The answer is right there. What's it look like? Like stacked discounts? Yeah. Oh, I like the way you say that. Stacked double discount. Okay? It's usually two discounts. It's a double discount. Okay? So here is 40 and 15. Right? So this wholesaler offers 40 and 15% discount for mom and pop. Is that 55% off? No. no. It is 40 and 15. We do them separately. Okay? Where does this, this discount get taken off of? Look at the invoice. Where do I take the 40 and the 15 off? Build. Build cost, yes. With me on this one? Not off of an individual purchase that I made, off of the total bill, okay? Now, let me ask you this. What if I pay the bill late? Do I take this discount off? Give me a yes or a no. 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 Yes. So these discounts, quantity, trade, and seasonal, have nothing to do with when you pay. They have nothing to do with dating, even if you pay the damn bill after it's due, okay? Don't confuse that. Quantity is based on how much you buy, trade is based on who you are, and seasonal, as we're about to remind ourselves in a minute, is based on buying out of season, has nothing to do with payment date, clear? Don't even worry about payment date yet, okay? Don't confuse that. All right, and then seasonal. So, seasonal discount is a discount for buying out of season. But what does out of season mean? Can you give me an example? What does out of season mean? Like, um, if you sell a sundress, like if you're selling um, sundresses for like discounts. Okay. Or because we're selling bills, but like, the pre-order stuff was winter stuff, and then like the stuff on sale was like the um, spring stuff. Great. It's the merchandise that you guys probably want to get rid of that you have excess inventory of, yeah? Um, that you are selling out of its season, right? So the month we're in is August, except that market was winter market. So nobody is really coming to market to buy stuff from spring, summer, right? Spring, summer is over. Obviously, the goods are on sale right now in the stores. So that would be a seasonal discount because that wholesaler wants to get rid of that merchandise. Let me ask you, Samantha, what are those retailers that are buying those sundresses right now probably doing with that? Okay, so they're retailing them, but they're just merchandising them differently, right? Yeah. Or could it be that they're putting them away for spring? Well, I mean, those people were like tech inspired, so they're like, we're still going to sell them now because it's so hot. Totally, right? So. Totally. Um, and for the rest of the country, they're probably going to pack them away for that for you know March, right? And pray that they're still you know cool, <laughs> that they're still awesome in March. Okay, everybody cool with these three discounts? Yep. Let's review before we go on, and remember they have to be calculated in this order. So, quantity discount is a discount for how much you're buying, right? Trade discount, discount based on. Who you are, what kind of retailer you are, what type of account you're going to be for that wholesaler. And a seasonal discount is a discount based on buying out of season. Out of season. 
Another example would be buying swimwear, right? When, when did we say the typical swimwear buying season is? When do swimwear buyers buy swimwear? Probably November, December, January, right? To make sure that those goods are in the stores by March, April. Um, so if we were buying swimwear in March, April, May, June, July, August, that's probably gonna be a seasonal discount, especially if we're buying the last season swimmer styles, okay? Another example would be like buying Christmas in you know October, November, which is not when Christmas buyers buy Christmas, okay? Okay, now, the last discount is the most complicated of them all. Cash plus anticipation, okay? A cash discount is a discount for paying on time, and what on time means is a whole conversation. Anticipation discount is a discount for paying early. And we can have the conversation one more time about why anybody would ever pay a bill early. Okay, but let's do cash first. So a cash discount is a discount for paying the bill on time. Okay, and by the way, bless you. We just went over all this stuff earlier. So we understand our invoice date, the date on the invoice, right? usually the date that the invoice is generated, okay? Receipt date is the goods, the day the goods are received by the distribution center. The discount date is the last day we can pay the bill in order to take the cash discount. And then the payment date is the day we can pay. And these are not always the same, okay? We're gonna get to some practice problems in one second. Okay, so here are six types of cash discounts, even though one of them really isn't a discount at all. Okay, six types of cash discounts. So let's go through them. COD, how do we read these again? Remind me, what is the first number? The and it percent. could be any number. It could be two, three, four, eight. It's the? The percent. Percent what? The percent discount. Discount, that's right. So that's the discount, okay? So in the first one, how much is the discount? What does N stand for? None. Uh, okay, I'll take that actually. It doesn't stand for none, but you're right. It is no discount. It's not discount. The N stands for net. So net means net. Net means when we get to the bill cost, net is due. Okay, net is net. So when I say net 30, it means pay that bill in 30 days, net. Okay, net. Now, again, Quantity, trade, and seasonal have nothing to do with when we pay. You take these discounts if they if you qualify for them. It's just this one that we're worrying about date. Okay, so what is this first discount, COD? Say it again. What'd you say a minute ago? None. None. It's no discount, right? When is payment due? On delivery. On delivery. Okay. So the goods show up at the store, the distribution center, a check usually it's still a check or electronic transfer funds, is made, okay? No discount. Who does this apply to? Is Macy's agreeing to COD? Uh, no. Why not? Yeah, why is Macy's never gonna agree to a COD? Because they're huge and they have millions and hundreds of millions of dollars in credit. So they don't, they're not gonna do COD. They're gonna pay the invoice 60 days from now, okay? So who does COD apply to? Yeah, small business that doesn't have any credit, okay? All right, let's go through these. Regular dating, read this to me. So we already know the first number, whatever the first number is, is the discount. 2% off, treat the slash as if. So 2% off if we do something, if we do something right. 2% off if? Paid in 10 days. Paid in 10 days. 10 days from what? We've got all these annoying dates up here. 10 days from what? So you've got, a you've got an invoice date, a receipt date, a start chip date, a cancel date, a payment date. 10 days from what? So as I remind you, when is your cable bill due? I was literally just on the phone last night with cable, getting my cable reinstated now that I've got televisions. Um, when is your cable bill due? 30 days after the like invoice. invoice date, right. So if the cable bill says 826, payment's probably due by 926, agree? Okay, so generally speaking, most of these 
payments are going to be due based on the invoice date. Okay, so here, 2% discount if we pay in 10 days. So what's 10 days? When is payment due? If the invoice is dated 826, when would payment be due? I do this on my fingers. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 9, 5? <laughs> yeah? Okay. And then I would look up my calendar and make sure 9, 5 is not a holiday because if it's a holiday, you get another day. Okay, so payment would be due September 5th, all right? So if I pay on September 5th, what do I do? If I get my accounts payable department to, to transfer the funds and write the check on September 5th, what do I do? Take 2% off the invoice. Tell them, hey, only pay 2% less, right? Okay, if I pay on 9-6, what do I pay? The net, correct, net. And net 30 means just that payment's due in 30 days, okay? So I have to pay the bill by 926, because the invoice is 826, okay? Um, okay, is everybody good with that one? So this one just says, I've got 10 days to pay the bill from the invoice date in order to get the 2% discount. If this said 215, what would that mean? 15 days. If this said 230, what would that mean? 30 days, great. If this said 815, what would that mean? 8% 8 8 discounted paid in, whatever I said. I forgot. Okay, great. <laughs> Good. Okay, next one. ROG. 2% discounted paid in 10 days. 10 days from what? Receipt of goods. Receipt of goods. So now I'm looking at that other day. When did goods get to my store for distribution? Okay. ELM. 2% discount of paid in 10 days, what? 10 days, what? After the, After the end of the month. What month? The Which month? The month, uh, the month I'm physically in? No, no, it's the following no. month. We can debate what month I'm in. I can leave that envelope on my desk with that PDF in my email. I could. You know, it could come 826, I could open it September 1st, come in a new month. So which month? Which month? Invoice month, yeah? So 2% is kind of paid 10 days after the end of the invoice month. What is 10 days after this invoice month? September 10th? Correct. It is always the 10th of the next month. I don't care what the date is. The date could be August 1st, it could be August 15th, it could be August 30th, it could be August 31st, it could be August 5th. The answer is always going to be September 10th, the 10th of the following month. What month? Whatever month the invoice is. Cool? Good? Michaela, okay, you're processing? Felt like you're going to have No good? Okay. All right. Good? Okay, next. Extra dating. I won't make dating jokes this week, okay? <laughs> Extra dating. 2% if paid in 10 days. Okay, so let me stop right there. If that was the whole discount, what kind of discount would that be? If it were just that? 2% off the paid in 10 days. What kind of discount? Regular dating. Good. It would be regular dating, right? However, ta-da, look what Vanna White has for you. <laughs> what do we ask for? Give me 30 more. Days. 30 more. Great, I love that you offered the 10%, I mean the 2% is kind of paid in 10 days. Give me 30 more days to pay. I'm dating here, right? I'm negotiating payment date. So I've just got myself how many days? 40. 40. 40 days from what? The invoice. Invoice date, here we go again. Exactly, 40 days. Okay, so what is 40 days from, from yesterday? How do I figure that out? What's the easy way to figure that out? Okay, actually I have an easier one for you, believe it or not. It involves just a little bit of a mental picture. From 826 to 926 is 30 days, and then I just add 10 more, right? 826 to 926, 27, 28, 29, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The answer is 10, 6. That's when payment would be due. So I could take the 2% discount if I pay by... October 6th. Do you see how I got that? Yes or no? Yep. I just, th 30 days is always just the next month. Roughly, sometimes it's a day off, but who cares? Okay, and then I just added the extra. Okay, everybody good? Last one, 
What kind of discounts are these? All of them? What kind of discounts? Yeah. Cash. Cash discounts, beautiful. Coming off of the bottom of the bill, right? Advanced dating. 2% discount if paid in 10 days from a date. Okay, why? What's this random date? 2% discount if paid in 10 days from a date. What the heck is this date? Totally random. What is this random date? Agree, yes. Why? Like, why that date? Some people want the merchandise at a specific time because it's very store specific. Beautiful. I want the merch whenever I want the merch between the start trip and the cancel, but I want the dollars to come out of this month's budget. See? And they're usually two totally different months. I want the merch in August, but I want the payment in February. That's maybe a stretch, right? Where I want the merch in December, but I want payment in February. I want this to come out of February dollars. Okay? That's what this one is, advanced dating. It's just negotiating a specific month to pay a bill in. Good? So, when is payment due here? 2% discount of paid 10 days, what? Yeah, after. From is a little bit confusing because I, like, what is from? 10 days after. Okay? So, that's, I basically have a 10 day window to pay from this date. Would that be something that like a bigger company does, like Macy's, would they Honestly, there's no, no one is preventing any company from negotiating any, any of these things, okay? As long as you have credit, right? No wholesaler is gonna trust you if you don't have the credit. You know, if you, have, if you don't have credit, you're not gonna get three months to pay a bill, right? You're gonna probably need to pay that bill on, on the good, on the receipt of goods. Um, but no, any company with credit can negotiate any of these things. You just have to know. You have to know they exist. And mom and pops don't know that these types of negotiations exist. Big companies, you better you bet your bottom dollar they do. They, they pull this for sure, okay? Just gotta know that they exist. Okay, everybody good, yeah? Okay, let's stop right here and let's put a little bit into practice, okay? So everybody, uh, four pages to the back of the book. Now let's go three pages to the back of the book. It's the first negotiations practice. We can do number one, we can do number three, we can do number four. We can't do two yet because we, have, we need to learn um, transportation, which we haven't done yet, okay? But let me read you number one. Good, need to take a picture? Okay, number one, an invoice for $1,866. I'm messing up my, my thing. Okay, um, an invoice for $1,866, I'll put it here, um, has, is dated June 20th. Okay, so the invoice date is 620 has terms of 6, 10 to 40x, anticipation permitted, how much should be remitted July 15th? Okay, stop. I should teach you one last thing before we do this because I, um, I'm one slide early. Anticipation, okay? So we did quantity trade, seasonal cash, let's just knock out anticipation and then we're ready to answer number one. Okay, so if a cash discount is a discount for paying on time, an anticipation discount is a discount for paying early. early, all right? Now, why in God's green earth would we ever pay a bill before payment is due? Why would I want to part with my cash? Okay, <laughs> so you don't make the mistake I made leaving the stack of invoices on the desk, sure, yes. Why else would we pay a bill early? More of a discount? Right because we want to take advantage of a little bit more of a discount because then that money comes back into our budget for something else, right? Okay, so this is a discount for paying early, but this is only applies when a vendor allows it, when the vendor plays this game, when the vendor allows this discount, okay? So if you ever read anticipation not permitted, forget it. But if you read anticipation permitted, then if we're paying early, you apply this discount, okay? The formula. I write the formula a little bit differently, so let me write it the way I like to write it, which is number of days early, okay, uh, divided by 365, which is the number of days in a year, times the interest rate. What is the interest rate? 
I use 6%, it could be a different interest rate, but what is the interest rate? Or the APR, the annual percentage rate. What is this 6% interest rate? What does it mean? If you don't pay on that rate. Nope. So remind me, we're gonna pay a bill, let's say the bill's a million dollars. And we're gonna take this million dollars out of our bank account early, maybe, I don't know, 30 days early. What are we losing? What are we doing by taking a million bucks out of the bank early? Yeah, man, we're losing a month's, in this example, a month's worth of interest. How much interest? Well, in, in one month's example, 30 out of 365 times 6%. So we're not losing 6%, we're losing a 12th of 6%. Everybody get that? It's just like your bank account, right? So every month, you make one twelfth of whatever the interest rate is that they reward you. Do you guys all know that? So right now, most bank accounts are paying 2%, okay? So if you keep $100 in the bank for a year, you'll make a whopping two bucks, okay? That's your 2% interest they're paying you, right? So if you take your money out of the bank, you know, after a month, you will make one, only one twelfth of that interest rate. Okay, so. That's the formula. Number of days that we're gonna pay early over the number of days in a year times the interest rate that we're losing, and we'll just keep it at 6%. Why is such a giant number? If you and I are only making 2% on our bank accounts, why is such a giant number? Absolutely yes, the answer is gonna be added to cash discounts, yes. But why is this number so giant? You and I are only making 2% on our bank accounts. Why is this number so big? Well, who are we right now? Who do you think is negotiating early payment on an invoice? Right, a huge company with tens of millions, right? Maybe hundreds of millions of dollars in cash in the bank. And they're making Boku bucks. They're making a giant interest rate on their money sitting in the bank. Everybody understand? So, for us taking money out a number of days early over 365, we're losing a portion of a giant interest rate in the bank. Okay? What's the answer always going to look like? What's my answer going to look like? Mr. Conti, I have no idea. No, no. Correct. It's usually going to be a little bit less than 1%. Okay? Um, 30 over 365 times 6% is half. How do I know that? Because if I were to multiply 12 months by half, I'd come up with 6%, okay? So just always know that your answer is gonna be something like 25, 26, 27, 24, 22, something like that, okay? And we add this to the cash discount. Okay, now I'm ready to practice. Okay, so number one, I'll read it one more time. Everybody with me on the third to last page of the book? An invoice for 1,866, boom. Dated June 20th, boom. Has terms 6% discount of paid in 50 days. What kind of discount is that? What kind of cash discount is that? Advantage. Extra, yes, it is extra. Because the cash discount is 10 and we're asking for 40 extra, right? So we have 50 days, okay. And anticipation is permitted. How much should we pay if we're paying on July 15th? Okay, what's the first question you're going to ask yourself in all of the negotiation situations, the problems that we look at in this class? What's the first question you have to solve? You don't know because we haven't done a practice problem yet. So I'll tell you. First thing you have to solve for all of these is when is payment due? Write that down so you remember it. When is payment due? Okay, that is the first thing we're gonna have to figure out for all of these problems. When is payment due? Okay, so when is payment due? The invoice is dated June 20th, and we agree we have 50 days to pay the bill, yes? We had 10 regular and 40 extra. Okay, so when's payment due? When is payment due? How'd you get that? I like it. 
I see head counting, I see calendar counting, I see finger counting, I'm a finger counter. What'd you get? Okay, no worries. <laughs> I lost my place. Okay, so let's just do it. We have 50 days, right? June 20th to July 20th, my birthday, is 30 days. July 30th is 40 days. August 10th is basically 50 days. I might take a day off. Let's make it August 9th. Payments due August 9th, agree? See how I did that? Why did I take one day off? Because I know that um, there's 31 days in July. So I just took July 31st and then nine, you get me August 9th, okay? Okay, so payments due August 9th. When are we paying? So I'll write that down. Payment is due August 9th, but when are we actually paying? July 15th. Are we paying early? Yes. yes. Is anticipation permitted? Yes. So what does that mean? If we pay early, we get a discount. So we need to figure out how much of a discount. Okay. So payments due August 9th. Cassie, can you see over me? Yeah, okay, cool. Tell me though. You can always tell me to move. Payment is due August 9th. We're paying July 15th. What is the number of days early? Well, July 15th to July 30th is 15. July 31st is one and nine is 25. You see what I did? We're paying 25 days early. Who's lost? July 15th is when we're paying, right? July 15th to July 30th is 15 days. July 31st is one more day. August 9th is nine, 25 days. Okay, so I'm gonna plug it into the formula. 25 days early divided by the number of days in a year times 6%. I know right now my answer is gonna be just slightly smaller than 25. Agree? Because this is just a few days less than a month early. Okay, do it for me. 25 divided by 365 times 6% and then move that decimal over two because it's a percent and give me an answer. Point four? Four one. What? Four one oh nine five nine. Okay. So, yeah. I'll take point four. How's that sound? Okay. So is the do we just do this whole mess for a point four discount? That's ridiculous. What's the full discount? What is the full discount we're taking off? Just six? Six point four. Six point four. Look over here. Cash plus anticipation, right? So the cash discount is six, but the anticipation discount is an additional 0.4. So we're gonna take, I'll do it up here, 1866 minus 6.4%. Does everybody understand how we got the six and how we got the 0.4? The six, oh, I, I'm sorry, I circled the wrong six. There's two sixes, that's the invoice date. This is the six. The six is just the 6% off we're getting for paying the bill on time. We paid by August 9th. In fact, we paid well before August 9th, right? That's the six. Is it always gonna be six? Nope. No, could be two, could be three, could be four, could be 10. Okay. It's gonna depend on every vendor's generosity. Just add that to your answer. Yes. Okay. If anticipation is permitted and if you paid early. Okay. okay. So that's your six, that's your cash discount. And that's your point four, that's your anticipation discount. Okay, solve it for me. All this work for like, you know, a $50 discount. What'd you get? 119.42. Can't be. It's not that? No. Okay, so then Think about it. Wrong. $1,800, 10% would be $186 off. So I'm guessing this is gonna be about a $1,700 payment. 57 cents? Oh, I was giving you the number off. Oh, okay. No, I'll, I'll take it. Okay. I was I'll about to say, it. I was like, oh, I did something wrong. But no, yeah. okay, you got it? Yeah, just, I would need to know how much to pay. And in these problems, please, when in doubt, give me to the nearest penny, okay? You do not like round, you, you would never round up a dollar, like I wanna pay to the exact penny, okay? Um, and when in doubt, go up a penny, pay an extra penny, all right? But you don't want to mess around with how much you're paying a vendor, all 
right? You gotta get it to the nearest penny. All right, even if you round off a penny, it's cool. Okay, how are we feeling about number one? I'm gonna skip number two for a second. Everybody ready to move on to three? Um, so Question. How do we do the math? No worries. How do we just do that? Yeah. Okay. So we got the six because we paid yeah, on time. I understand how we got the six and four. We got the point four because we paid early, so we added them together, and we're just going to take six point four off of this total bill cost. Okay. So imagine the total bill cost was eighteen sixty six, and now we're just going to deduct six point four percent. That's it. The math is simple. It's the whole like lead up to figuring out the, the discount. That's the complicated piece, right? The math is just taking a discount off. It's quick. Okay. It's the figuring out what the discount is. Okay. Before we go on, can you guys remind me, like, why are we having to do this math at all? Like, why doesn't the invoice just come with like pay this amount? Why are we having to do the math? We the buyer. Why doesn't the invoice just tell us how much to pay? It's, a, it's actually a really stupid question. Why doesn't the invoice literally just come PDF in the email? Just say, pay this amount. It might not pay it on the discount fee. Correct, exactly. Because the vendor doesn't know when we're paying. The vendor doesn't know are we gonna pay early, are we gonna pay on time, are we gonna pay late. That's exactly right. So we're doing the math, and literally we're doing the math probably with a pen on the piece of paper because we're telling our accounts payable, hey, pay this much, right? We're almost never gonna pay the full bill cost. We're gonna tell them how much less to pay, depending on when we are paying. Does everybody understand that? So in case you're sitting here saying, why the hell do we have to like calculate an invoice? It's because the vendor doesn't know when we're paying. So they don't know which discounts may or may not apply, okay? Okay, I was about to say good question, but I asked the question. <laughs> good question, Mr. Carson. <laughs> All right, can we look at number three? Number three. Um, a buyer purchased. Okay, now this one's a little bit different. 48 lamps at $50 each. What do we need to do here? Unlike the last problem that just totally gave us the total, what do we need to do here? Yeah, we need to find the total, right? The total of the cost. Okay, so do that for me first. Up my board. Okay, so how much is our invoice? $2,500? dollars $2,400. $2,400, got it. Okay, everybody cool? 48 times 50, right? Okay, now do me a favor. Will you label these? This is a poorly written question, okay? So shame on me. The 30%, let's call that quantity. The 20 and five, let's call that trade, okay? And if I ever write a question and I don't give you parameters, then you get the discounts, okay? Is everybody with me on this one? The 30% is your quantity discount for spending $2,400. And the 20 and five is your trade discount because of who you are. Who are you? Who the hell knows? Just do, take the discount, okay? All right. Then terms are 210 net 30. Um, transportation. Okay, let's stop. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there in a minute, I promise. Let's go to number four. Number four, goods. All right, we have two dates here. We have a ship date and a received date. What's the ship date? July 28th. What is July 28th? Everybody with me, I skipped to number four. What is July 28th? No. But good guess. Good guess. What is July 28th? Look up there, there's a menu of options. A menu of guesses. Nope. Invoice date? Yes. So July 28th is your invoice date. Okay? A lot of times goods get invoiced when they ship. All right? That's your invoice date. And August 2nd is you got it, R-O-G. Okay, cool. So, what is the last day to take the cash discount? Let's go through these. So for A, 310 EOM. First of all, what kind of cash discount is 310 EOM? 
Good, it's an EOM discount, right? EOM cash discount. Okay, so 3% discount if paid 10 days after the end of the month. Which month, July or August? So is it the invoice month or the receipt of goods month? Invoice. Oh, yeah. Invoice. yeah. So what is 10 days after July? August. August 10th. August 10th. That's the answer. Got it? Yes or no? We're, we're, what we're doing right now in number four is figuring out what is the last day we can pay the bill to get whatever discount is that we're looking at. Okay? So with EOM dating, it's always the 10th of the following month. So July, whatever, I don't care what the date is, the answer would be August 10th. 10th of the following month. What month? Invoice month. Okay? B, 8, 10, ROG. What's the 8? 8% 8 8 discount if paid 10 days after receipt of goods. So there's your answer right there. August 2nd plus 10 is August 12th. 12th. Easy. Everybody got that? We added 10 days to the receipt of goods date August 12th. C, 6% discount if paid in 10 and 30 extra. What's 10 and 30 extra? 40, 40 days. 40 days from which date? Invoice. Invoice date, okay. So let's do it, it's easy. July 28th to August 28th, right? That's 30. August 28th, 30. And I need 10 more. So here come the fingers. 29, 30, 31, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. September 7th. You guys agree? Answer is September 7th. I ju we just counted 40 days. 30 and 10 more. Okay? Last one. It's a little confusing, this last one shouldn't be. 4% discount if paid in 10 days, otherwise net 30. What am I trying to ca calculate right now? the last day to take the discount. So to take the discount of 4%, when do I need to pay? 10 days. 10 days. From which day? As I walk through the rice. Invoice day. Okay, so July 28 plus 10 days. Fingers, 29, 30, 31. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. September, I mean, August 7th. Got that? Just 10 days from the invoice date. Okay, you guys feeling good? Everybody feeling confident? Okay, let's do the last topic that we didn't do, which was transportation. Okay, now we can solve the rest of these guys. Okay, so transportation. Transportation literally means shipping, okay? And there's pretty much two kinds of shipping. <laughs> we pay, they pay. What do we want? We pay, they pay. What do we want? They pay. They pay, all right, of course. Don't you all want free shipping? When you buy something, of course you do and we want to negotiate the same for ourselves. We don't want to pay shipping. Honestly, the bigger reason why we don't want to pay shipping is because whoever pays shipping owns the goods in transit. We don't want to own the goods in transit, agree? You can't sell the goods if they're sitting on a ship, okay? 90% of the time, oh man, I don't even have a picture of a ship here, but 90% of the time the goods are on a ship, yes? They're coming across the Indian Ocean from Asia, generally, India, okay? Uh, very rarely are they getting flown in, okay? That's only in like emergency situation. Okay, so first thing you need to understand is FOB. Write that down. You're gonna see FOB in the problems. FOB stands for free on board, some companies refer to it as freight on board. It means the same damn thing. I don't know why there's two ways of saying it. Free on board, freight on board, okay? Think of FOB as the point at which ownership swaps. Imagine you're buying a house and I hand you the keys. It's the point at which I no longer own the house, you own the house, I hand you the keys, okay? So FOB is the point at which the merchandise transfers ownership, okay? So at that point, the new owner pays shipping, all right? So there are two types of FOB. FOB shipping point, I, I say it a different way, or FOB destination. I say FOB factory, 
FOB destination. I'll explain. Okay. But first, let me draw a beautiful little supply chain for you to visualize, okay? Here's the factory. I'm getting it deja vu. Have we done this before? I think we have. Here's a truck. Mm -hmm. Go with it, all right? Here's a ship coming across the Indian Ocean. Here's a truck, a port of LA. And here's a distribution center. Wholesaler. There's another truck. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing to think about how much our clothing or any of our merchandise goes through to get to us? It's kind of mind boggling. Made in a factory in India. Factory gets it on a truck. Truck gets it onto the ship. Ship gets it to the United States back onto a truck. Truck gets it to the wholesaler's distribution center. Goods go from the distribution center back on a truck to our distribution center. Chimney's a like official, all right? Retailer. And then obviously from there, it's a whole, then it's another truck to the store. Isn't it amazing? Like, think about how much, I don't know, waste there is involved in all of that and everything else. But, okay, so, FOB factory, FOB destination. In FOB factory, okay, the ownership transfers right here. In FOB destination, the ownership transfers here. Okay, so let's talk about this. With FOB factory, the buyer pays transportation and the buyer takes title from the factory. This is FOB factory. Okay, so let's think about this. FOB factory. The manufacturer will transfer title here. The manufacturer will get the goods onto the ship, and then we pay. We pay for shipping, and we own the goods in transit. Is this a good thing? No, this is exactly what we don't want, okay? That's FOB factory. So anytime you see FOB factory or FOB shipping point, all you have to do is add the transportation cost to the I have to say one really important thing. Literally after this class, I am going to FedEx down the block. I'm not even kidding. This just happens to be the perfect example. To ship out, um, I don't know if you saw my Instagram yesterday, but we wrote these amazing, gorgeous reports for our um, accreditor. They're going to come in October. They're going to be so impressed because we're amazing. Uh, I mean that. I mean it. Um, so today I'm going to ship out these little, like, um, reports that we wrote, okay? So I'm gonna to go to FedEx and I'm probably gonna pay like stupid amount of money to ship these things. Okay, is FedEx gonna give me a discount? <clears throat> Does FedEx give a flying hoot what's inside my box or envelope? No. no, okay? Please, 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 when you're figuring out all of these discounts, okay, never, ever, ever factor the cost of transportation into a discount because FedEx has nothing to do with your discount, nor do they care. Are you with me? Okay. A discount gets, I mean, a, a, a transportation charge, a shipping charge gets added on at the very, very end. It is not hooked up with, it is not involved in any discounts. Are you with me? FedEx or a shipping company or DHL, they're not giving you a discount. They have nothing to do with what you've negotiated. Just add the shipping at the end. Got it? Okay, but that's if it says FOB factory because with FOB factory, we have negotiated or not negotiated that we own the goods in transit and we pay shipping. Got it? Okay, last slide. FOB destination. So with FOB destination, the wholesaler is gonna get the goods all the way to us. Where are we? They're gonna get the goods to us. Where are we? The distribution center. Our distribution center, correct. Just like last week you guys came and saw um, the Andrew Group's distribution center, yeah? 
that is a that is a uh, a retailer's distribution center. Okay, so with FOB destination, Andrew Group doesn't pay to get the goods to receive the goods in their distribution. Center. It's free shipping. When you see FOB destination, don't do anything. If shipping is $100, don't do anything, just leave it alone. Why? Correct, because the wholesaler is paying. Okay, questions before we do an example. Questions? FOB factory, what do we do? Add transportation. FOB destination, what do we do? Nothing. Leave it alone, right? FOB factory, who owns the goods? We do. we do in transit. FOB destination, who owns the goods? Wholesaler vendor does during transportation. Okay, by the way, I have a slide that I wanted to tell you that I at least disagree with. Um, here, in case you wrote this down, I hope you did. Wrong. Totally disagree with this. Generally speaking, who do you think pays shipping? We do. Tell me your thought process. Who do you think pays shipping? But I've just said I totally don't agree with this. The, the wholesaler? Doesn't agree with that either. The vendor? Just said it. I don't agree that the wholesaler oh. would pay shipping. The customer. Well, we are the customer, technically, right? The buyer and the retailer is the customer. Who do you think pays shipping? The customer of the retailer? FedEx. I mean, sure, ultimately, <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course. Yeah, no, you're right. Like, we're going to bake the price of transportation in, sure. Yeah, but think about it like, if we're buying a polo shirt from Ralph Lauren, I don't know why I'm feeling artistic today. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what this is. I really don't. Is that a shirt? <laughs> it's a polo shirt. Okay, and no matter what, this sucker is gonna retail for $75. Why? Because the MSRP on the tag says $75 and Ralph Lauren tags are pretty, I'm not gonna mess with them, okay? So this shirt's gonna be $75. So no matter what, I'm gonna retail this bad boy for $75. If I'm the retailer paying shipping on this, that makes my margin go down. Do you agree? I'm going to make less of a markup on this item. Yes? Ralph Lauren paid for it. I didn't say that just yet. Who pays shipping? Think about it. Who pays shipping? Who generally is going to pay transportation costs? Okay, you want me to put you out of your midstream just to answer yes. the question? Yeah? Whoever the smaller party is. Yes? Think about negotiating, right? So if I'm a giant company like Macy's, I'm pretty much going to go into almost every negotiation like a big bully and say, you want to sell to me? We don't do shipping. We don't pay shipping, right? You take the cost of shipping. You want to sell to Macy's? You pay shipping, right? They're a really huge organization, Walmart. I can guarantee you that Walmart probably never pays transportation costs. Why? Because they are probably the biggest customer account to any wholesaler that's selling to them. Okay? So they don't pay shipping. Who pays shipping? Whoever the smaller party is. Whoever that is. That's generally who's going to pay shipping. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes? If the retailer is smaller, they're going to pay shipping. If the wholesaler is smaller, they're going to pay shipping. Okay, let's do another. I have a million more practice problems. Number two. So, oh no, wait, weren't we doing, we were doing number three, weren't we? Yeah. Okay, let's finish number three. Number three. So a buyer purchased 48 lamps for $50. You guys tell me that's $2,400, yes? Okay, so we have a, a quantity discount of 30, a trade discount of 20 and 5, Terms were 210 net 30, that's your cash discount. 2% discount if paid in 10 days, otherwise net 30. Transportation is FOB factory. We'll review that in a second. Shipping charges is $68. The lamps shipped and billed October 18th. What's October 18th? 
Beautiful. Invoice date. Thank you. Received October 25th. What's that? Receipt of goods. Good. ROG date. The bill is paid October 31st. Okay. October 31st. We've got all these dates for dealing with. How much should we remit? Remit is just a fancy way of saying, like, yeah. pay the bill. How much did you pay? Okay. What is the first question we are going to ask ourselves? When is payment due? Okay, so when is payment due? When is payment due? When is payment due? October 28th. How'd you get it? Because I added 10 days to the invoice date. Yeah, basically we have 10 days to pay the bill. 10 days from what? Invoice date, so payment is due. Due. October 28th, right? 18 plus 10 is 28. Okay, when are we paying? Ooh, this is so easy. This is so easy. When are we paying? Late. Late. Okay, so do we get no discounts? Which ones? Good, okay, so let's do that. So what's the first discount I take off of this bill? I'm just buying lamps, so how much is the quantity discount? 30? 30%. Okay. Go ahead and do it for me. 2400 minus 30%. Could be a giant discount. The discount is 720. 720. Oh, it gives to me one at a time though. 1680. 1680. All right. Then take what's the trade discount? 20%. 20? Give me that. And then give me the five. Right, is it five? Yep, okay. What'd you get? 1276.80. All right, so we took our quantity, we took our trade. Do I take the 2%? Terms are two, 10, net 30. Do I take the 2%? No. No, no. no why not? Right. Paid late, so we don't get that discount. Okay, now shipping charges are $68. FOB factory, free on board up until the factory. The vendor is going to put the goods on a ship, and then what? We pay. We pay. So, what do I do here? Add $68, and then we're done. Go ahead and add it. I see 13 something. Thirteen forty four eight. Got it? Okay. Everybody understand why we did not take the two percent cash discount because we didn't pay on time. Why'd you add the sixty eight? Yep. Good question. So, two types of transportation: FOB factory, FOB destination. Yes. FOB factory means we pay, and we also own the goods during transit. FOB destination is they pay. Don't do anything. Okay, so we added the $68 because it's FOB factory. Okay, good. Let's do number two. Towels and bath accessories. I swear to God, that's like the next thing I need to buy for my house. Is in West Virginia. Okay, so that is where our vendor is, West Virginia. They have agreed to ROG dating so the retailer can use a cheaper but slower method of transportation. Okay, so this is like the slow boat. Terms are 210 ROG anticipation permitted FOB factory. Merchandise was billed at 1386. Shipped on April 24th, do we care? In this example, we don't really care because the cash discount is ROG. Merchandise was received May 2nd. I care about May 2nd because May 2nd is ROG. Everybody understand why? because the discount is 210 ROG, okay? All right, so if the invoice is paid on May 12th, how much should we remit? All right, so let's just go through, first of all, are there any discounts, are there quantity discounts here? No. Are there trade discounts? No. Are there seasonal discounts? No. Is there an anticipation discount? Yes. Yes, yes. anticipation permitted. Okay, except watch this. What's the first question you're gonna ask yourself? Good. When is payment due? 210 ROG. 
May 12th. Payment is due May 12th. When did we pay? May 12th. May 12th. How many days early did we pay? I erased the formula, but zero divided by 365 times 6% is zero. Zero, zero times 6% is zero. So our anticipation discount is nothing because we didn't pay early, right? Mm -hmm. If we paid early, we paid the day before, it would have been one of 360, which would be only zero, but it's still the Okay, so all we're gonna do is what? We're taking 2% off because we paid by the due date. Okay, what's 1386 minus 2%? Told you the math isn't hard, it's just figuring all this stuff out. And you're rounding up or down to the right penny? Okay. Perfect. Everybody with me? 1358.28? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Questions about that? Turn the page. All righty. Let's do number, let's do them all. Let's do them all. Number one, invoice is dated May 12th. Total bill cost of 3480. We'll do a couple together, I'll let you do a couple on your own. 3480. Okay. There is a quantity discount of 10. Just put that up here. Trade discount of 35 and 15. Seasonal discount of 10. And then cash discount of 2, 10, 50x. Anticipation permitted. If paid on June 10th, how much should be remitted? Okay. So we can either ask ourselves when is payment due, or we can go ahead and apply quantity trade and seasonal. Again, if I don't tell you why you're getting these discounts, then just take the discount. Poorly worded question, right? I should give you some context, which you'll see on the next page. Okay, so let's just go in order. 3480, what discount comes first? 10%. Quantity, take 10% off. What'd you get? Okay, then take trade. 35. What'd you get there? 2035. Somebody else? Yeah. Okay. Uh, then I what? Got 80. I got 80, not 80. Okay. Then Seventeen thirty forty three seconds. Seventeen thirty forty three. Okay. Is there a seasonal? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, now we're talking about these discounts. Yeah, gone from a three thousand dollar bill to what? Fifteen fifty seven. Fifteen. 57 and 38. Do we round up? Uh, if it's like 387. 387. Let's make it 39. 39 cents. With me? 387. Seven would make the eight and nine. Okay. We've done quantity, we've done trade, we've done seasonal. Now let's figure out the cash discount. When is payment due? We're paying on June 10th, but when is payment due? 60 days. Let's erase all this junk. From May 12th. 60 days from May 12th. That's easy. July 12th. July 12th, right? May 12th to June, June 12th, June 12th to July 12th. Okay, I'll take it, July 12th. Payment is due July 12th. When are we paying? June 10th. June 10th. Did we pay early? Yes. Is anticipation permitted? Yes. All right. How many days early did we pay? June 10th to July 10th. Can we just call it 32 days early? Mm -hmm. See how I got that? June 10th to July 10th is 30 and two. Okay, let's plug it into the formula. I'll do it on this side. Number of days early, 32. 
Number of days in the year, 365. Amount of interest we're losing in the bank, 6%. You already know the answer is gonna be 0.5 something. Because if it was 30 days, it'd be 0.5. What is 32 divided by 365 times 6%? 0.5, two? 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 Three? What do you like, three? Yeah. Okay, don't cheat the number. All right, so what's the last discount kind of I'm gonna take off of here? 1557.39 minus what? Just 0.53? 2.53. Uh, 2.53. Everybody understand where the two came from? 2% cash discount. The 2% is just for paying on time. The 0.53 is for paying 32 days early. So we're going to take 2.53% off. 2 for paying on time. I don't know where the point. 0.53 to pay early. 2.53. Okay, take it off. What do you get? 15.17.99. Okay. Now, does it say anything about transportation? No. Then we're done. Questions? Okay, let's do two together and then I'll let you do three on your own. I'll let you do three and four. Bless you, bless you, and bless you. Two, a manufacturer of children's clothing in Blue Springs, Missouri. Okay, so that's where they are, probably that's their shipping point. Ships all merchants, merchandise, FOB Kansas City. Okay, uh-oh, Mr. Conti, what does that mean? Is that FOB factory or is that FOB destination? Who are we? This truck takes merchandise to Kansas City where it's turned over to a carrier specified by a retailer. A store in Knoxville, Tennessee is ordering this merchandise. Who are we? The store in Knoxville, Tennessee. No, we're never the vendor, we're always the buyer. Right, so we are the store in Knoxville, Tennessee, okay? A store in Knoxville, Tennessee has ordered merchandise. Total bill cost of 1868.70. Terms, 810 EOM, anticipation not permitted. So what does that mean? Right, if we pay early, don't bother paying early, because if we pay early, there's no extra discount. The merchandise is shipped and billed July 12th. What is July 12th? Invoice. Beautiful. Invoice. Invoice date. Transportation charges are 26.50. If the store pays on August 10th, how much should be remitted? Okay, so first of all, is there a quantity discount? No. Is there a trade discount? No. Is there a seasonal discount? No. Is there a cash discount? Yes. There's no anticipation discount, so that doesn't matter. But there is a cash discount. Do we get it? So the invoice is dated July 12th. When is payment due? 8, 10, EOM. 8% discount of paid 10 days after the end of the month. What is 10 days after the end of any day in July? August 10th. When are we paying? August 10th. August 10th. So what do I do? Did I pay on time? Yeah. What do I take? 8%. 8%. 8%. <laughs> okay. Take your 8% discount because we paid on time. What do you get? 17, 19, and 20. It's weird that was like this one. Okay. 17, 19, 20. Great. Are we done? So it says shipping, manufactured children's clothing, ships FOB Kansas City, FOB Kansas City, but where are we? Free on board all the way to Kansas City, but where are we? Not Kansas City. What do we do? Add transportation. You got it, add shipping, add transportation, exactly. Okay, why? Because it's FOB basically factory, okay? We need to get it to the destination. So we're gonna add, how much is it? 26.50? Seventeen forty-five seventy. Great. Mental math and action. Okay. Would you all like to do three and four on your own so I can shut up for a second? Go. Go to it. 